Richard Belmonte is a nurse and he hasn't treated a COVID patient for eight months. But the mental trauma from working in the intensive care unit at Barcelona's Valdebron Hospital during the first wave of the pandemic still lingers. When I arrived at the COVID-19 ICU, my first sensation was fear, fear of the unknown. I didn't know what I was facing. Colleagues who'd arrived before me came out, and I remember the words that one colleague of mine said, this is a battlefield, this is a battlefield. As the pandemic drags on, the emotional toll for health workers on the front line is receiving increased scrutiny. Spain is one of the worst hit, and the effects aren't always contained to the workplace. In Belmonte's case, it's also more personal. Not only was he forced to live away from his family to protect them from COVID-19, but both of his parents fell ill with the virus. For his dad, the disease was fatal. My mother and father were in the same room with COVID, and my father didn't make it. And I'm angry. I couldn't take care of him because I'm a nurse. I like to take care of people, and I couldn't do it for my father. A recent study of 9,000 professionals in 18 hospitals in Spain showed that around 45% of healthcare staff there were at high risk of some type of mental disorder after just the first wave of the virus, and that 3.5% of them had suicidal thoughts. Depression, anxiety and post-traumatic stress disorder were the most common complaints. Dr. Eduard Vieta is the head of a Barcelona clinic which was part of the study. He said although the hospital offered counselling, getting medics to come off the COVID front line was tough because they don't see their limits. There are certain prejudices and difficulties for professionals and for people in general to admit that one has psychological problems because they're perceived as a weakness, as a personal fault, instead of admitting that it's a health problem like any other. Belmonte refused counselling, choosing to tackle his struggles with the help of his family instead. Despite everything, he says he would happily treat COVID patients in ICU in the future.